Good afternoon, I'm Larry Irving, and, and thank you. This has been an incredible day already, and um, I kept hearing from people that I needed to come down to South By to see Cory Booker, um, who apparently is speaking at the exact same time as I'm speaking, so I'm not gonna see Cory. But for those of you who are here to see me instead of Cory, thank you. You can tell your friends that you saw a tall, bald, East Coast, black guy, Stanford graduate, and then we'll know it wasn't Cory Booker. That would be me. Um, <laughs> I'm not running for anything. There'll be no political questions or political ass at the end of, my, uh, end of my talk. But I really want to talk to you about mobile technology. You've heard some incredible speakers this morning. And you know, when you talk about mobile technology, what's exciting to me is how much we can do with mobile technology today that we couldn't do just a few short years ago. There are lots of different organizations look, using mobile technology for various purposes. What our organization, what we're doing that's a little bit different from others, is we're trying to bring together the world's best hearts and minds to solve the world's hardest problems using mobile technology. Now, we all know there are lots of organizations. There's M Water, there's M Health, there's M Women. You're gonna hear from Mama today. We heard from Angela earlier today. We heard from the World Food Program, and all of them are using mobile technology. But what they're not doing, and what we're not doing as a planet, is talking comprehensively, co co collectively, holistically, about how we're gonna use mobile technology to solve our problems. Let me give you an example. So, you know, when, when we look at technology, we look at it in silos. Now, I, I'm from New York, so I think that's a silo. I was told by a friend that's not a farm silo, it's an industrial silo, but that's a silo. And you have people who are talking about health, and you have people who are talking about water, and you have people who are talking about women, you have people who are talking about nutrition. Where's the conversation jointly? Who, is the, who are the people who are coordinating all of those different activities and making sure that what we're learning in the education space, we're pulling over to the health space, and what we're learning with regard to um, mobile development and, and nutrition, we're pulling over into the water space. And that's something we think we can add. We think that's an important conversation. It's not being held, but needs to be held. Let me give you an example. There are six billion of these devices floating around the planet, six billion. 77% of the mobile devices on this planet are in hands of people in the developing world. 7.8 trillion um, SMS messages were sent in 2011. Almost 10 trillion text messages were sent last year. There's a lot of different activity going on. We're, we're changing the world right now but we're not changing it fast enough, and we're not having all of the folks at the table. Now, I go to a lot of conferences, and I see a lot of folks sitting around there like this, having conversations about a siloed area. About three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I was at a uh, health conference, and it was a really powerful health conference, and folks were talking about using technology to solve health problems. But one of the things that I noted when I looked at that conference is, where were the people who were talking about water? There was nobody there who was a water expert at this health conference, and the reality is, if you look at what's happening on this planet today, Every 21 seconds, right? Every 21 seconds, a child under five dies because of clean, uh, a waterborne disease. There are a billion people at risk of waterborne diseases. 70% of the diseases in Africa, 80% of the diseases in other parts of the world are waterborne. And there are people on this planet who are using mobile technology to get clean water to people, to have payment systems set up for clean water, who are using um, mobile technology so that they can monitor what's happening to a water system somewhere on the planet. When I come here to Austin, Texas, I, I started my life as a, in politics working for a, a gentleman named Mickey Leland. Mickey started the House Select Committee on Hunger back when we had the, Biafra, um, the, um, the, um, the uh, hunger crisis in Eritrea and Ethiopia. We just had the World Food Program talking about how they're using mobile technology for hunger. If you're talking about health, you've got to be talking about agriculture, you've got to be talking about nutrition, you've got to be talking about hunger. Where are the people who have an understanding about that at that conference? When you're talking about these things, you've got to be talking about education. When I was born in Brooklyn, New York, in the projects in 1955, I had a, low, a shorter life expectancy than a white guy who grew up two miles away. It wasn't just because of genetics, it wasn't because of food, it was because of education as much as anything else. What are the right foods? What are the right intermediate steps we should be taking? We can either do things with health with regard to cure and treatment, or we can do things with health with regard to education and wellness and making sure that people across their lives using mobile technology. Has there ever been a better technology than mobile technology to give people the tools they need with regard to neonatal care, prenatal care, aging care? These, we've got to make sure if we're talking about health, we're also talking about education and food and water and all of the components that go into health care. And similarly, if we're going to talk about health, we've got to talk about women. I mean, I'm a guy, I like being a guy, but you know, we're a pretty screwed up gender. And if you're talking about who really does all the work in the, in this, on this planet, to make sure that we have a healthy planet, disproportionately it's women, and disproportionately it's women in the developing world. We have a gender gap with regard to mobile technology. I'm the guy that came up with the term digital divide back in the 90s when I was working for Clinton Gore administration. Today we have a gender gap with regard to as many phones as we have. If you're a woman in the developing world, you have a 27% less likelihood of having a mobile device. That makes no sense because the people who are solving the problems of hunger and education and wellness disproportionately are women. 
We've got to do something about the gender divide. We've got to make sure that organizations like Mama have our support, but every woman who wants to have a mobile device should have access to one. And we've got to find a way to have a conversation about how do we get that global female community working on the solution to these problems. This phone, this little basic phone. Now, you know, most of us think of te technology, we think of all the latest gizmos and gasmos. Most of the change that's going on in this world is because of a feature phone. That looks exactly like the phone my wife has. She refuses to get anything more, uh, more recent than that. But that phone has toppled dictators. That phone has fed hungry people. That phone has educated people. That phone has let people know what the market price of something is. That phone has found water for a child that needed clean water. A phone that looks just like that. Now what happened when those phones, feature phones, morph into something like this? In India, this is a $40 Akash tablet. Until a friend of mine dropped it, it, it worked pretty well, and it worked about as well as my first edition iPad. $40. It's on the market today. Millions of people, if not billions of people, have access to tablets. If we're doing the things we're doing right now with regard to governance, if we're doing the things with cutting down on fraud, we're doing things with education, if we're doing things with healthcare, with devices that look like that, what's going to happen when we have those kinds of devices in the hands of billions of people? And those are the things we should be thinking about now and building into the process. So there's another piece we really need to think about. We've talked about mobile, mobile technology. What happens if mobile technology gets, becomes part of the sensor community? There are incredible things being done with sensors. We've all seen what's happening with pollution around this planet. You can take a, a basic mobile phone, put a sensor on it, and tell the pollutants. You can take that same mobile phone, put a sensor in it, put it in water, and tell where clean water is. The Internet of Things is developing. We're going to have billions of interne interconnected devices around this, around this planet that are going to give us more data than we've ever had about what's happening on this planet. You're talking about irrigation, you're talking about healthcare, you're talking about making sure that we're a healthier planet. The Internet of Things is going to help us do that. And then you add to that Internet of Things the data analysis, such as uh, George was talking about a few minutes ago, um, or the, as Andrew was talking about, or as other folks were talking about, let's find the data, let's interconnect it, and let's do analysis. Those of you on the front lines of solving these problems, working with data analytics experts, Imagine what we can do. That's the future. Seven billion, eight billion interconnected devices, billions of interconnected things using the data analysis on the back end to really make a generational difference in the way we attack programs, what we understand about the programs and how we can make a difference. You know, if you talk about mobile devices, it's phenomenal. If you talk about mobile devices with sensors, it's great. If you talk about mobile devices, sensors, and data analytics, that's when the magic happens. We can really make a huge difference if, we, if we're starting to think about it. And I ask people, how would you use mobile technology in a kind of, when you're in, in, in a social good space, and they kind of look at me with this funny look, and I'm like, if you don't have a mobile strategy and you're an NGO, you don't have a strategy. 20 years ago when I first started doing internet stuff in the Clinton Gore administration, people were talking about they had an internet strategy. Nobody has an internet strategy anymore. The internet is integrated into their strategy. If you're an NGO, if you're doing something in the social good space and you don't have a mobile strategy, you don't really have a strategy. What are we doing? We have the MAG Alliance, and the MAG Alliance brings together different groups of uh, corporations, technologists, social innovators, NGOs, anybody who wants to join our group, we want to be part of our group to have a conversation about how we can make this happen. We will have a convening um, twice a year, once in September this year, once in the developing world in the Southern Hemisphere, probably next spring, where we bring together as many different actors and players and participants as we can to have this conversation. We will have an, uh, an awards because we believe that the power of prizes to drive innovation, to let people know what the best so solutions out there are, but also to make sure that potential funders know what the, um, um, the stream of new ideas looks like. We want to get everybody who's interested into the award system because awards have incredible power. I was a judge for the first Webbies, and I can tell you in 1993 when you tried to explain what the internet was, most people didn't know the Webbies really helped give uh, illustrative examples of what was happening in the web space. And then we're going to do some hackathons, and we have a better way of doing hackathons, we think. It won't be just an event. It will be a process. And at the end of that hackathon, what comes out of that hackathon will be something that people will actually use. It'll have a nurturing environment instead of just being dropped out there with no opportunity for really liftoff. You know, we want to bridge the cultural gap between developers, and these are some of the groups that are working with us. I hope all of you will join us as we go on this journey. And I want to, you know, I want to close and ask you to join us. Now, we're in, in, in the South, and it's um, Sunday, and about this hour, lots of churches are letting out. If you've ever been to a Black Baptist church or a Southern Baptist church, and at the end of that church, they say, join us. Come on up and testify and become part of our community. We want to be part of our community as well. We need your help. We need your support. We need your energy. We need your innovation. Um, you know, I was going to quote from that. I see my time is up, but I've got like three seconds. I want to quote from that great Irish philosopher, Bono. Um, it's about a week before, it's a week before St. Patrick's Day, so let me just read this quickly. 
Tools the technology provides mean we know more and we understand more about previously thought unsolvable problems. With this data informing our course, we can describe the kind of world we want to live in, and then without airy fairiness or wishful thinking, go after it. It's the greatest opportunity that ever has been offered any generation, which is the truth. Wow. Wow. Please join us as we try to use mobile technology for social good. Thank you very much.